Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. I'm looking at a book from Waterside Press today. Uh, this is uh, an organisation putting justice into words, uh, a splendid organisation. They publish a lot of books directly relevant for criminologists and the more interested general readership. This book is called For Abolition. It's got a subtitle, Essays on Prison and Socialist Ethics. It's been written by David Scott. Um, I've done a review uh, of it. I'm not a socialist and I think it's quite useful to have um, a different point of view. Um, I see what, what Mr Scott is saying, but I come for it from a different angle. And what I've said in my title for the review is The Inconclusive Politics of Penal Abolition. How long can we continue with the present nonsensical system? Now I say that because we've had prisons for centuries. In the past, they lock people up, they either executed them or let them out. Very few people were ever actually imprisoned. Today, we have 100,000 people inside. The whole system is uh, really in a, a terrible state and we haven't worked out, apart from the costs with full tariff prisoners, about 10 million pounds per prisoner. We haven't really worked out, apart from the fact we know it's about 40,000 pounds per year per prisoner. It's very expensive and it's something the Ministry of Justice will grapple with, I'm sure, for decades to come. However, this is a book that looks at uh, the subject in a particular way. There's the front of the book, it's a paperback, there's the spine, and then on the back you can see a little bit of uh, information. There's a forward by Joe Sim, and Dr Scott works for the Open University and he's published a lot of books, it says here, uh, on prisons and punishment, and there's some quite good quotes there. The book itself has a little bit of information at the back about Waterside Press. There is a short uh, in, uh, index at the back by page numbering. The book runs to 260, 200, under 300 pages anyway. You can see the index is quite substantial. There's a very detailed bibliography. It's an important work. If we go to the front of the book, there's a quote, which I have actually mentioned. Uh, I'm going to re refer to that again in a minute. Um, then you've got the, the blurb about the book, and you've got the front page there. Just to see that. Flicking it rather quickly there. Then you've got the table of contents. So information about the author. Then we run through uh, what's in the book itself. Um, the Prison Puzzle and Socialist Ethics, Abolitionist Ethical um, hemi hemiotonics or hemionics. I don't actually pronounce that word very well. Invisible brutal hands, phantom faces at the window, prison is not a home, falling softly to your grave, abolition as a philosophy of hope, ordinary rebels everywhere, the abolitionist image. Then there's an afterword at the end, and nine chapters, bibliography and across the index. Details about the author, and then we go into the Acknowledgements, of which there are a large number, uh, a lot of people involved in this. There's a, there's a very nice dedication, which I'll leave you to read there. We only review books which we think are important. This one is important, and I like to put the dedication in because it's important for people to know um, who's been involved and what's happened uh, with, with the work. There's a publisher's note, just saying it's his views. In some cases, very few of them really, and then uh, a little uh, note by Professor Emma um, Bell, which is quoted partly at the back, just talking about this collection. It's dated July 2020. They've got various other people, Dr Catherine Chadwick, Dr Alana Barton, and then we get into the forward from Joe Sim. And then after that, we then move from there into a preface. There's a lot of stuff here. And the preface by David Scott, and then after that we get into the body copy itself. And the first chapter, The Prison Puzzle and Socialist Ethics, Making the Case for Abolition. And again, as I say, it's an important book. And let me just give you a general picture of what's in it, because this is a new book from Waterside, and it draws upon the socialist ethics of dignity, empathy, freedom, and the paradigm that's the word I will describe it as, of life, to systematically critique imprisonment as a state institution 
characterised by social death, because obviously you're taking away a person's freedom. Now, Swift, who is well known to many people for Gulliver's Travels and lots of other things, um, is actually quoted. He lived from 1667 to 1745, and he said, Laws are like cobwebs, which may catch small flies, but lets wasps and hornets break through, connecting the politics of abolition to wider emancipatory struggles for um, liberation and social justice is what this book puts forward because it looks at the argument for penal abolition or penal abolitionism if we can use an ism to, to cover it which should they say or the author specifically and colleagues sh say should be understood as an important public critical pedagogy um, and a philosophy of hope that can help to reinvigorate democracy and to set society on a pathway towards living in a world without prisons. Now that's where the problem is because we've had, as I said, prisons for a very long time and there's a very big danger that other things may come into play in the future. At the moment though we're heading for a position where we've got a bit of a stalemate. We're getting so many people being put away all of many of whom have really massive social problems apart from criminality um, that need to be looked at. Now what we've got here and again the words come in I'm afraid a little bit trendy for me a systematic critique of imprisonment which challenges established views and myths. It examines why there still exists so much political and other misguided support for a long failing institution. That's the prison system. Now I'm going to make you draw your own conclusions on the basis that this is clearly set out as a socialist <coughs> socialist book on ethics about the prison system. And the question we've got for the 21st century is how far do we go before other mechanisms come in and other forms of dealing with people who transgress are actually addressed. Um, the book itself, I think, does look at it. It's an easy book to read. It's not a long book, so you can zip through it quite quickly as part of, say, your criminology studies. But I do think it adds to the debate on where we might be going uh, in this century, long past the time I'm here, but certainly I believe it's something that should be on the agenda because we can't continue to build more and more prisons because at the end of it all, a lot of the people who are actually in prison in any event shouldn't really be there. They should be looked after by the state in other ways. That is, of course, one view. There is always the view of some politicians that tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime, all this sort of stuff. Um, it's, it's all around and there's a, obviously certain newspapers are always talking about what we've got to do with people who commit serious crimes. That issue has to be resolved. The date of publication of this book is cited at the 30th of November 2020 and I'm recording it quite a long time afterwards because of the pandemic but at least I've got um, a, a review ready. There's the book again, there's the spine and then there's the back, just opening it in the middle. Um, falling softly to your grave. Freedom, relationships, place and a lived experience of prison time. That's why I think it's important because it's trying very much from a criminologist's point of view to try and give some indication. It's applied criminology, this area. It's to try and give you some idea of the problems as we see them at the moment and what we might consider doing about them. Um, it does refer to a very large number of, of different commentators. And as I've said, there is a very substantial bibliography at the back. Uh, all the usual people are there and a lot of others besides, a lot of books and a lot of articles. But as I say, from the 200 pages of the, the book itself, I think you'll find it's um, a worthwhile book to read as part of your applied criminology course. Big thank you to David Scott and to all the other people involved, and of course to Brian Gibson at Waterside Press. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.